Brosh's convenience store. This is Brosh. Whoa, whoa, slow down, deputy, slow down. What's going on? A crazed woman is running through town and she's what? Half naked and wearing no shoes? Yeah, that is odd. Well, who is she? Well, someone in town must know who she is. <clears throat> yes, sir, fine. Okay. I'll give you a call if I see her run by my shop. Okay, bye. Brosh's convenience store, this is Brosh. Calm down, Mayor, calm down. I've already spoken with the deputy. Uh-huh, was she half naked? Oh. Barefoot and wearing a what? An orange prisoner jumpsuit. Well, no, I heard she wasn't wearing much at all. Is that right? Well, yes, sir. I imagine running in handcuffs would be a little challenging. No, sir. I, I am taking this seriously. It's just that I've heard two different accounts of what I assume to be the same mystery woman. Yes, sir. You'll be the first person I call. Uh-huh. Okay. Bye. Hi, this is Brosh. What do you claim she's wearing? Well, Mom, you're not the first person to call me today. No, I've already spoken with the deputy and the mayor. Uh-huh. Yeah, was she wearing handcuffs? Oh, completely naked. But no handcuffs. Okay. Fine, but I... Yes, Mother, if the naked woman runs by my shop, I'll avert my eyes. Okay. Look, Mom, I gotta go. The shop is real busy right now. I got a line of 10 people I gotta ring up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Mom. All right, bye. Never mind. Uh, sports drinks are in the back. Hi, Deputy. Yes, sir, I think I found your suspect. Well, no, sir, I know it may be hard to believe, but it appears the citywide telephone game we've been having might be a little misleading. No, sir, I, I think I can handle it. Uh, but if she gets violent, I'll give you a call. Okay, bye. What was that all about? You? Me? Yeah. You got this whole town all riled up. There must be some mistake. <laughs> oh, there's a mistake all right. You don't have any Gatorade? Nope. All we've got is that Ranger holding right there in something called Gladiatorade. Gladiatorade? I've never even heard of that. Nobody has. It's the only two brands my supplier will drive all the way out here, so that's what we got. I guess it's all the same. How much is it? Well, I'm afraid at this moment you can't quite afford it. What? See, we have a very strict policy in this store, and if you think that little bit of cash is gonna get me to break it, you got another thing coming. Wait, I'm confused. What is this policy? Didn't you see the sign posted out front? No shirt, no shoes, no service. No, I didn't see any sign posted out front. Well, the sign fell down a few years back, but it's as true today as it was the day I hung it. 
Well, how do you expect someone to know about your policy if there's no sign? Well, I'm telling you about my policy right now. But how is someone supposed to know before they walk in? You actually kind of jogged in. Okay, before I jogged in. Look, I set the rules in here. Everybody else in town knows that. If they want to come into my store, they need to follow my rules. I understand that. You could have asked anybody who lives in this town. Okay, I'm new in town. I didn't know, but I will remember for next time. Great. Well, maybe next time you come in, I'll let you buy something. Seriously? You make it literally impossible for someone new to know the rules, and then you won't let it slide just this one time? Nope. Not even so I can give you money for this overpriced off-brand sports drink? I don't make the rules. You just said you did. Fine. But you're still not buying anything in my store without wearing any damn shoes. Fine. Are you happy now? Yep, that'll work. Maybe I'll go somewhere else next time. <laughs> Where are you gonna go? Oh, right. I guess you are the only convenience store in town. Yep. I'm not really obligated to pretend the customer's always right. Not until I get some competition. Look, maybe we got off on the wrong foot. I'm Bailey. I'm Brush. Oh, like the store name. You're quick. Is Brush your first or last name? Both. Both? If you must know, my full name is Brosh E. Brosh. Wow. So what does the E stand for? It don't stand for nothing. It's just an E. Well, that's a new one for me. But I like the way it sounds when you say it all together. Brushy brush. So I'm new in town. I start work at the school Monday and I'm teaching seventh grade. Oh, I get it. You get what? You're one of those new teachers. I am. Well, I hope you manage to stick it out the full school year. What, what do you mean? Eh, most teachers leave for Christmas break and never return. Really? Why? Let me guess. You read out of college, right? Yes. And they brought you into town with a bunch of other future teachers. Town leadership rolled out the red carpet, told you all about how quaint and sweet this little old town is. Am I right? Well, sort of. But I... But uh, then they told you if you stayed for five years, they'd take care of all your student loans, right? Yes, they did. Look, the mayor's been running that little program for about a decade now. You want to know how many teachers have stuck around full time to get their student loans wiped out? How many? None. None? Zero. Well, why? Look, they're desperate for teachers in this town. All small towns are. Well, I know that, but I think I'll fit in here just fine. Oh yeah? Yes. I grew up in a small town, so I kind of know what I'm getting into. Well, it doesn't seem to matter. Even the kids who grow up here, if they ever leave, never come back. Why not? I don't know. I guess they figure they're too good for a small town. Well, I'm not like that. I'm actually really excited to live here. Is that so? Yes, I like this town. I think it's adorable. I even think your store is adorable. If you weren't a woman, I'd be taking you outside right now. What I mean is, I love that your store isn't some cookie cutter, big chain convenience store. And I love these. These leather anklets are adorable. I assume they're handmade. They're handmade all right, but those ain't anklets. Well, what are they? 
They're leather castration bands. What? Castration bands. You see, you wrap it around the hog, scrotum them all tight, and once it's on a week or so, the blood circulation is completely gone, the scrotum and testicles just drop off. Well, I still think it's adorable. And now, if anyone asks me about it, they're gonna get one hell of a story. Pretty cute, huh? So, Bailey, what's got you running around town barefoot? You wait until your first paycheck to buy a pair of running shoes? Nope, actually I always jog barefoot. What in the hell for? Actually, back in college, I was part of a barefoot runner's club. A barefoot runner's club? Yep. There's been a lot of research over the past two decades, and it shows that running barefoot has tremendous health benefits. It's better for your back, it's better for your knees, and some suggest it's better for your overall mood. Any of those studies suggest that you look like an idiot running around barefoot? That's why we need to normalize it. But it's gotta hurt, right? Good question. I think people underestimate how quickly your foot forms a callus. It's a little uncomfortable at first, but after a while, I don't even notice I'm barefoot. But what about all the broken glass or jagged rocks just waiting to tear your feet to shreds? Hasn't been a problem so far. I guess the callus makes those things less of a threat. Did I mention how much you look like an idiot? Why don't you come jogging with me? You are nuts. Uh, just try it. I don't even go jogging with shoes on. I promise you'll like it. I don't like anything. What makes you think I'm gonna like this? Fair enough. But I think you should be more open to new ideas. See, that's why you're not gonna make it around here. Nobody in this town's open to new ideas. I bet that's not true. I admit change can be slower in small towns, but change is inevitable. You'd think that, but you'd be wrong. It can't be that bad. Tell you what, you come back to my store tomorrow morning when I open at 5 a.m. You'll see about six old men sitting right over there. They've been coming in here longer as I've been alive, back to when my father ran this store. Maybe even when my grandfather ran this store. Every morning, they each order a cup of that sludge black coffee I make and sit there, never saying more than two words to one another. They sit there for exactly two hours, then they all get up and leave. I'll take your word for it. I'm not much of a morning person. You know, last election day, one of the old timers named Bill reminisced about coming in and get a cup of coffee before he voted in his first presidential election. Really? Yep. He said he cast his vote for Wendell Wilkie. Do you have any idea who Wendell Wilkie is? No. Neither do I. That's my point. What's your point? Things never change. People in this town hate change. Those old men would strangle me if I so much as switch coffee brands on them. Yes, but I think that... Did you know that I got call after call after call this morning telling me about some lunatic woman running around town? Nobody runs around this town, certainly not barefoot. What the big deal is. It might sound harmless to you, but these people will never be okay with you running around town barefoot. Even if you stayed here for 20 years, they'd probably still call the police each time they saw you. Well, I understand that, but I'm not gonna change who I am just to be a people pleaser. Well, then I don't think you'll even make it to Christmas. I expect you'll skip town in less than a month. Nope. You'll see. I'm gonna be myself and I won't let this town wear me down. I'm probably the most open-minded person in this town. Let that sink in for a minute. Well, I remain undeterred. I like you, Brosh. I like this town. This is my home now, and I expect that after the first five years, I might stay a few more. Is that right? Yep. You'll see. I'll prove you and everyone else in this town wrong. Well, I hope you're right. Just know, the defiant ones are typically the first ones to leave. Well, you better stock up on your sports drinks, because I'm coming in here every day after my run. Just as long as you... I'll bring my flip-flops. All right. Sounds good. I'll see you after your next job. See you, Rush. I'll probably see you every morning for the next five years. You just go out and prove me wrong. I will.
Um, sir, do you mind if I come into your store barefoot? Huh, are you kidding? I haven't worn shoes since the 80s. That's great to hear. Do you have any Gatorade? Ooh, no, uh, we don't have any of those evil corporate brands. The only uh, sports drink I have is this. Whoa, that's 15 bucks. Well, that's what it costs when you're using cruelty-free fair trade ingredients. Well, what's in it? Activated charcoal, activated matcha, activated turmeric. Well, I'm only a school teacher, but I guess I can afford it now that I'm in the big city and getting paid a decent wage. Is that right? Yes, I just spent the worst year of my life in this awful small town. Oh, man, that's a drag. It really was a drag. Just a small town filled with narrow-minded people that hate everything that's just a little bit different. Ugh, I hate places like that. I thought I'd like it, but it just wears you down over time. Not that there weren't red flags right at the beginning. Like what? Well, get this. The first day I'm in town, this store owner refuses to serve me when I came into his store barefoot. <laughs> Man, what a bummer. Some people, am I right? Yeah. I mean, everybody in that town was just... Wait, what's that on your ankle? Oh, this. Well, I wear it as an anklet, but it's actually... Is that made of real leather? Y yes, I think so. Get out. What? Why? Didn't you see the sign posted out front? Uh, what sign? No! It says, we have the right to refuse service to any sheeple wearing the skin of a dead animal. It really says that? Yeah. That may not be exactly what it says, but the sign says something like that. I didn't see any sign. Yeah, well, it fell down a couple years ago. <laughs>
you might want to get to know us first before you decide to stay. <laughs> okay, okay, that, that's a good first step. Um, right, so let's get to know each other. Um, I will start. Um, I'm Jake. Um, that is not short for Jacob. Um, <laughs> youth ministry is not my first career. Um, until a few years ago, I was a human resources manager, uh, but that just um, wasn't really uh, fulfilling to me. Um, so I decided to go back to school. Um, Bible school this time, and um, and I'm finished with my coursework now, and uh, this is my first assignment to a church, and I just, uh, you know, want to let you guys know I am um, super stoked to be here. Oh, um, okay, uh, so let's see. Um, I'm a big fan of swimming, um, boating, um, pretty much anything on a on a body of water um i have a girlfriend anna um we've been dating for about a year now and uh let's see i am a big nerd for whodunit uh mysteries okay so does anybody want to go next Uh, what about you uh, there, buddy? Uh, the button-down shirt. Uh, Denver, is it? Yeah. Uh, my name's Denver. I'm 15 and a sophomore, and my family's been coming to this church since I was a baby. Great. Great. And uh, uh, what about what about hobbies? Uh, what do you like to do, Denver? Drool I, over Cassie. <sighs> I play soccer. I play on my school's team. And I like to read my Bible and, you know, study it. I'm looking forward to you leading us in some more Bible study. Yeah, cool. Cool. Um, sounds good. Um, I, am, I am terrible at soccer myself, but I, I enjoy watching it. Um, okay. Uh, anybody else want to volunteer? Um, hey, Jaden. Okay, we've met, all right, but... Um, I'd like to get to know a little bit more uh, about you, other than all the good things I've already heard from your parents. Correct. Good things from my parents. Be cool. Fine. I'm Jaden. I'm 18. I'm senior. And as you can probably guess, because he hired you, my dad's the senior minister. All right. And, and your interests, you know, what keeps you busy? Um, you know, daydreaming about graduating high school, going to college, starting my own band, and be proudly out and about as an atheist. He's not really an atheist. He just says that so people will think he's so edgy. Like, oh my God, the minister said is an atheist. <gasps> I'm going to choose to ignore that. Um, first off, I... I don't believe in God and all this nonsense. I think that's what the definition of being an atheist is, Cassie. Okay, hey, 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 <laughs> guys, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. We can we can get into all kinds of theological discussions, okay? I mean, I am looking forward to it. And and look, there's no judgment on my end, okay? This, this room is a judgment-free zone. Just like Sean used to say. Okay. Um, do you want to go next? Um, Cassie. Hi, I'm Cassie. Okay. Um, Hi. my family has been coming here almost as long as Denver's and we don't have like officers or anything in youth group, but if we did, I totally be the president. President. I'm just a natural born leader. Um, let's see. I'm captain of the volleyball team and vice president okay. of the student council. I can't be president right now because the president has to be a senior and I'm only a junior. Let's see. Uh, I just turned 17 last week and I plan to go to cool. college and public and uh major in public relations um i already have three scholarships from three different universities to play volleyball so i just have to and she's to go. totally into older men in positions of power so uh, watch out jakey boy cassie is not into older men 
Denver. I don't need you to speak up for me. And Jake, please ignore Jaden. He's a sh- he's just upset that he doesn't have any scholarships to play baseball. Well, I have three from three major universities. Okay. So you can it. We're please. all tired of hearing Cassie's resume. So I can go. Um, Finley, 16. Denver invited me to come to youth group last year. Probably something Cassie will never forgive him for. And um, my mom seems to ease up on me when I'm coming here. So I'm always working on the equation of how infrequently I can come and still keep my mom off my back. Seems like twice a week is the sweet spot. She likes it here more than she'll admit. Okay. And what, what interests you, Finley? I mean, what do you play any sports or, you know? Yeah, right. I have no interests. None. I just exist. Whatever. She likes zombie fiction. That's why we became friends in middle school. If there's a book about zombies, Finley's read it. And she's way into eyeliner, clearly. Look at her. <sighs> okay, got it. Okay, zombie novels, all right? that That's sweet. That's cool. I mean, I have read my fair share of those, too. Um, okay, so that just leaves... Um, Charlie. Excellent. Okay, tell me about yourself, Charlie. Well, um, Denver brought me here too. Um, this is just my second time, though. The first time was two weeks ago when Sean announced he was leaving. So that was an interesting first visit. Cassie had an epic meltdown. It wasn't that epic. I mean, he just sprung it up on us, and, and, and we didn't even know he was seeing anyone. And then suddenly, there's his girlfriend, <laughs> no, Beyonce. <laughs> Smoking hot fiance. And then they just and they're leaving and moving and starting a church in Paraguay. Um, in Paraguay. Guam. So whatever, it doesn't matter. It's just, he's gone. Here one Sunday and gone the next. He left us to a total stranger. God, Cassie. Come on, it's not like Jake's a serial killer. You don't know that. I'm pretty darn sure. Okay, okay, um, hey, so we, we will circle back around to how I am not trying to be the new Sean, okay? But look, we didn't let to get Charlie finish talking and I would, I would like to hear more, okay? Uh. Charlie isn't the most talkative. Well, not what are you talking for them? I'm not talking for them. I'm just trying to help. Help with what exactly? They can talk for themselves. Help explain? In case Jake doesn't understand, you know, about gender fluidity. Hey, not cool, Denver. It should be up to Charlie if they want to talk about it. You're right. Charlie, I... I'm so sorry. God, I like outed you. I I was only trying to help, I swear to God. It's it's okay, Denver. No, it's it's not okay. Hey, Denver, don't take the Lord's name in vain. Hey, look, guys, we, we don't have to talk about this this now. And and Charlie, Denver, you you don't have to explain. I know what gender fluid is, okay? And it's fine. And, and, and frankly, I am, I am happy to hear this group being so woke. Oh, old straight white dudes should not use the word woke. It makes you sound like a tool, even when you are saying the right thing. <laughs> okay, okay. Good, fair point. You got me. I am glad to hear this group being so open. Is that better? Yeah. Just don't go blaring it out to my dad or the deacons, Jakey boy. Um, they're not quite so open. Great, Denver. You invited me to a church I'm not even welcome at. That's just the old people. Youth group is different. We want you here. Yeah, you're the coolest person in the group. God knows we needed a little less basic around here. You're welcome here, Charlie, but 
Finley, I am not basic. Just because I have more color in my wardrobe and have interests outside of zombies and really good at volleyball does not mean I'm basic. It just means I'm really cool. <laughs> Sounds pretty basic. <laughs> Uh, new kid in the youth group burn. <laughs> okay, guys, um, I really can't help but feel like we've gotten a little bit off track here. Um, I said I wanted to circle back around to how I'm not Sean, how I'm not trying to be Sean. Um, okay, so things will be different, but different is is good, right, guys? I mean, without change, we cannot grow. Um, but I did kind of waltz in here and demand that you tell me about yourselves. So, um, so here's an idea. Um, let's turn up the heat on me for this next part. Okay. I'm going to break you guys up into groups and in these groups, um, you know, we're going to be talking about a few different things. Um, and it's not homework, okay? It is not homework. This uh, is- Wait, 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 wait. This sounds a lot like homework. No, 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 this is not homework. Uh. It's not, it's, this is, this is you work, okay? I mean, no, this is us work that we're gonna be doing here. I mean, I want to think about what you or, or, or rather we, as, as a group, want from this youth group. And, and while you're thinking about this, just know, okay, you can also ask any questions you have about me, okay? I mean, whatever you want to know. I am an open book, okay? So, also any questions about the Bible And even the parts that seem to contradict. Like you know, all of it. Questions or topics that we want to discover and uh, discussions that we want to have. I'll answer whatever I can. Okay, goals for the group. And also questions for Jake. And this will give me some, some good ideas in terms of what I can do for planning for future meetings. So um, who's working with whom? Okay. Um, I would like Denver, Finley and Charlie in one group and then Cassie and Jaden, you two pair up. Ew. Okay. <laughs> Are you serious about us asking anything? Uh, you bet, Charlie. Oh, um. Okay. Um, I'm just going to break you guys up into groups and um, I'm going to take this and um, we'll see what you guys come up with, okay? Charlie? Okay. Uh, okay. <sighs> hey. I just wanted to see how it's going. Is this an okay time? Yeah, no, it's perfect. Um, I just split them up into groups uh, so they could come up with some questions for me. Like what you were talking about yesterday, questions about what Bible topics they're interested in pursuing? I'm curious to hear what they have to say. Yeah, um, that and also, you know, their groups for the, their goals for the group and also, um, you know, any questions they, they might have uh, about me. Didn't you tell them your background when you introduced yourself? Well, yeah, sure. But, um, you know, I'm trying to get them to open up to me. So, so I thought it would be a good idea to allow me to open up to them. I, I told them they could ask me anything. Oh, anything? Yes, anything. Absolutely. Nothing is off limits. 
oh Jake that's not such a good idea these are kids <laughs> teenagers y you need to establish boundaries it'll be fine Jake I have taught teenagers for nine years now I am giving you my professional opinion that this this is not the best strategy <clears throat> <laughs> So, uh, we're gonna ask Jake how serious he and his girlfriend are. Jaden, could you be serious for, like, one moment? I think we should ask him what his previous work with teenagers was. I mean, I don't really think he's gonna get us, you know? He's so much older than the other youth ministers I've seen. Like, 30? Blah. Cassie, I... I've known you for a long time, and you gotta stop with this like notebook obsession type thing. I, I don't know what I don't know what it is, but um, there's so there's so much more out there. Like, take for example, Din. Like, you know he has a massive crush on you. Give him a chance. I, I mean, Den Denver's a sweet kid, but he's only fifteen. He's way too young for me. Plus. Can't you tell he Finley totally has a thing for him? It's so cute. Finley? No, Dan's too much of a Boy Scout. Come on. Finley. Gothic Princess Finley, I think, needs someone that's like her, someone that's on the edge. So what? You're into Finley? So cute. <laughs> So, uh, what if I am, huh? Oh, are you going to be disappointed? Is that it? Oh, you're hoping I'm into someone a little bit more basic. Is that it? Whatever, Jaden. <laughs> come on, listen, listen. Can you come up with, like, one serious question for Jake? Like, one? What? One serious question for Jake. Do you have it? One more time, please. I what? can't hear you. Fine. Do you have a pencil? I don't want to text this to you. I've had it this entire time. If you paid attention, it's been right here in my hand, but whatever, I guess. Okay, Ooh. fine. You, do you, you want me to actually give you one? This is good. Yes, like a real one. Fine. Okay. <sighs> Ready? This is good. This, this is mouthful. Okay. All religions are fictitious narratives meant to control the general population change my mind. That's not a question. Okay, fine. Can you change my mind? <laughs> okay, so, so what? You're afraid they're going to ask me some embarrassing questions? I think I can handle some embarrassing questions from a group of teenagers. No, not just embarrassing. I am worried you don't know where this rabbit hole is going to take you. You're, you're the new guy. Your philosophy doesn't exactly match up with the church doctrine. I'm worried if you want to keep this position for any amount of time, you need to keep a tight hold on the rein. No, 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 this is, this is perfect. You know, they are a pretty progressive little entity in there. I mean, they've got a, a gender fluid member, Charlie, and all of the kids just jumped in to protect Charlie. It was, it was so beautiful. That's really great, but honestly, it makes me even more worried. So you and this group of, what, five kids? No, they, they've got several kids who aren't there today. Okay, but my point is, this group of kids you're talking to today, they, they may be very welcoming and protective of Charlie and others who don't align with the church doctrine, but... And, and that suits you, and it aligns with your beliefs and what you want to do. But the leadership of this church is not going to be on board with that. So I, I worry for Charlie that in the end they are going to get hurt or ridiculed or worse. I don't know. Look, it's not like I'm some sort of double agent infiltrating the enemy. <laughs> but aren't you? Okay, so we have questions and suggestions here for all three categories, but the few are for Jake about himself. 
No, you have questions and suggestions. You haven't included a single one Charlie or I offered. That's because you haven't offered a single suggestion I would even consider asking out loud. For example, I am not going to ask Jake what his shoe size is, Finley. I know why you wanted to ask that, and it's not even true, you know. It's a myth that a man's shoe size equals his... You know. <laughs> well, despite that being hilarious, Finley, yeah, it's not something we're really gonna ask, but Denver, I do think it's fair to ask some potentially embarrassing questions. I mean, like teachers are always saying, you'll never learn anything if you don't ask questions. Right, and then you ask them to talk about something you really want to know about. And boom, wall. Jake offered to answer some real questions, so I think we should take him up on the offer. Okay then, what do you want to ask? For real this time. Well, what about if one of the youth group's goals could be to start an LGBTQ group? Yeah, that's good. I'll add that to the list. Thank you, Charlie, for actually caring about this group. Unlike people who have been coming for a whole year. You know I only come to youth group to keep my mom off my back. Yeah, you use us. I'm aware. Fine. I will come up with a Denver-appropriate suggestion for your list if you will come up with an inappropriate one. Okay. How about this one? Oh my god, yes! Excellent! This is the only question we really need answered. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't consider the church the enemy, so no, I'm not infiltrating the enemy. I know, I know. But... And, and, look, I agree with the majority of the doctrine, okay? Uh, just not the backwards, outdated nonsense that, that keeps people from being able to take advantage of everything the church has to offer. Okay. Okay, just my last attempt to change your mind is based solely on my years of experience as an educator. Your ask me anything approach is going to get out of hand. Those kids in there, they may seem like a nice group of kids, and no doubt in most scenarios they are, but teenagers are also ooh, unpredictable monsters. And if you don't keep control, they are going to chew you up, spit you out, and put the whole thing on TikTok. Noted, noted, noted. I understand. It's going to be fine. So you're not going to let them ask you anything then? I am going to continue with my current strategy. <sighs> Okay, you've been warned. You are feeding the monsters. <laughs> I will call you after. Oh, maybe, if the monsters aren't too hungry. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. <laughs> okay, hey, hello everybody. I'm back. Is, uh, is everybody ready? Uh, I'm not sure if you're going to be Jakey boy. Okay, so what I was thinking, um, let's, let's work from the small stuff to the big stuff, okay? So, like, I am small potatoes compared to the goals of the group and biblical discussion. So um, let's, let's get to it. Um, what do you want to know about me? Was that your girlfriend you mentioned on the phone? Yes, it was Anna. Um, I will introduce you guys to her next week. Are you having premarital sex? Um, no, we are not. Uh, we are in agreement that we will follow church protocol and wait for marriage for that. 
have you had premarital sex before? Um, uh, yes, yes, I have um, in previous relationships before I decided to recommit myself to the church and to God. Thanks for actually answering that. <laughs> you bet, Charlie. Okay, it's my turn. Ah. Um, Jake. Okay. What made you want to work with teenagers? I mean, I don't really think you had a lot of experience with your previous HR job. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Cassie. Um, working in HR doesn't exactly set up anybody for working with kids of any age, much less teenagers. Uh, but I did some volunteer work with the Boys and Girls Club of America uh, for about seven years. And it felt like it was that volunteer work that kept me happy, you know, not, not my actual job. So I thought, you know what, I, I should seek an actual job that would let me work with kids. And, uh, and teenagers in particular. And then maybe I could be um, happy, you know, more of the time and, and put, put more positive energy out into the world. Positive energy, huh? Sounds a little new agey to me. Do you believe in the healing power of crystals? No, I don't. Is that a real question, Finley? Just ask him your real question, Finn. Come on, no judgment, remember? It's okay. Just like Sean used to say. Yeah, just like Sean used to say, except he was actually pretty judgmental. Remember when we asked him about why Methodists have female pastors, but this denomination doesn't, and he was kinda a major ass? Really? Or when there was that rumor going around school about that girl Jana having an abortion, and I asked him why, if all sins are equal, did people treat abortion like a worse sin than gossiping about an abortion? And the only response he had was that he didn't know how any girl could live with the guilt of taking an innocent life. That's pretty judgmental, Cassie. Finley, you don't know what you're hey, talking yeah, about. Guys, guys, know. guys, hey, hang on. Hang on, hang on, just a second here, okay? I mean, these 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 are some pretty heavy topics, and and Sean was probably responding as as best he believed that he could, you know. But I'm I'm guessing that I might have a different take than Sean on a lot of issues. So, Finley, come on, let me hear it. I promise not to be a major ass. Fine. Do you think one of our goals as a youth group could be to start an LGBTQ plus group, like a support group or club or whatever? That chance. I mean, have you met my dad? Hold up, hold up, Jaden. I don't want to dismiss this. You know, we, we're, we're talking about the youth group goals, not necessarily the whole church goals. But the youth group is part of the church. You're... You're gonna get fired before you even get your first paycheck. Look, I know the church as a whole would probably not be on board with a big gay pride sign on the front of the building, but that doesn't mean that we can't work on a way to let queer teens know that they would be welcome with us. Okay, inclusive outreach. Okay, how, how's that for now? I can deal with that. You know, I'm on board, but don't say I didn't warn you about my dad, Jakey boy. Look, uh, Jaden, so far you've had a lot to say, but I don't hear you asking any questions or suggestions for the board yet. <laughs> yeah. He was 100% useless at brainstorming. He was useless you at have no yeah. All right, come on, oh, okay. come on, come on, come yeah. on. Let's hear it. Okay, I, I have a question for the board. Okay. So, you said it yourself that there's some contradictions in the Bible. Yeah, many, in fact. Hey, Ken, do you think we can, like, actually go in depth in some of those? Like, 
have a lesson or whatever where we look up some of those contradictions in the Bible um, and, and, you know, analyze them in the context of the story and in the bigger picture? Is that something you think we could do? Okay, so variations slash contradictions in the Bible. Yes, yes, this is, this is great. That, that was an area of interest for me during my coursework. I already have several lessons that, that we could start on with this really soon, you guys. This, this is great so far. I mean, we're really getting somewhere. Um, okay, so Denver, uh, what's at the top of your list? What do you got? Well, um... Finley, Charlie, and I, we, we were wondering what the church's official stance might be on the, um, the impending zombie apocalypse. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 Um, Give me green for this one. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Uh, I'm not sure what the official church stance is on the zombie apocalypse. Um, but I think it's important that our group uh, drafts an official statement of where we stand <laughs> on the zombie uprising. Okay. Zombies, I think, bad. <laughs> but, but you know personally i'm against it but okay hang on hang on so what happens if there are zombie defectors oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay i i i might even consider them letting the defectors join our group Oh, no <laughs> judgment here, zombies. Come on in. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, yes. <laughs> okay, okay. 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 <laughs> yeah. Jake. <laughs> All right. When and where were you baptized? Uh, I was baptized as uh, a baby in um, this this literal Lutheran church that my mom and I went to. As a baby? Wait, don't don't the Lutherans do that like sprinkle thing, just a sprinkle of water on the baby's head? Is that is that even a baptism? No, no, it's not. You have to be fully dunked in water for it to be a real baptism. You were baptized later in life, right, Jay? <clears throat> in a real baptism when you were older and knew what it meant to give your life to God? Um, no, actually. Um the Lutheran Church, uh, and not just them, but a number of different denominations and sects, um, actually, they, they fully support the, the sprinkling method, as you call it, as, as a valid form of baptism. <laughs> but, but, but this church doesn't, right, Jaden? You have to be fully dunked under water to be part of this church, right, Jaden? Cassie, who, who cares, really? Sprinkled, dunked glaze, a smidge of chocolate icing. The only real difference is the amount of magic water you're using. I'm talking about the rules here, Jaden. I mean, I know you know the rules inside and out of your dad's church because you actually followed them before following the path of Satan. Well, I, I don't really even say neither, but if you want the actual answer, fine. You must be fully immersed in order to become a member of this church. If you were baptized previously by another method, then you have to get dunked here in order to become a full member of this church. See, Jake? I mean, does Pastor Michaels even know you haven't been baptized? How can we trust you as our youth leader if you've only had a few drops of water sprinkled in your head as a baby? How can they be washed away before you've even sinned? How can they be washed away with a sprinkle? That's not the real thing! Like Coke Zero. It's baptism light. Diet baptism. <laughs> I know you're joking here, Finley, 
But for once, I agree with you. I mean, is your soul even saved? You're barely baptized. Look, Cassie, I, I understand this is an important issue to you, but it's it's just a small difference in a denomination's small interpretation of God. physical baptism. I mean, some translations of the Bible use the term immersion, uh, but others use words like like wash or or drip. And if, if you consider the ancient world's access to water and, and many biblical stories taking place in literal geographical deserts, I mean, the, the likelihood of people actually being immersed is, is pretty slim. I mean, it's, it's not about the exact details of the ritual. It's, it's about the spiritual meaning behind the ritual. And... Lutheran doctrine says, I think, that you know, if parents have a child or a baby, and they baptize it, but yet they still bring it up within the church, then there's really no need for them to get rebaptized as an adult. So yeah, that's right, Jaden. Thank you. Well, look who knows his doctrine. Yeah, well, I mean, if I'm gonna reject something, I'm gonna at least know why. I'm not an idiot. But can you see my point, Cassie? Denver, Cassie, you guys there? Hello? Oh, she's there. She had just tweeted, so. Okay, look, I don't need to be immersed for another baptism because my first baptism under my mother's guidance set me on a spiritual path. And, and, and while, yeah, I have struggled along that path in different ways, I never left it entirely or stopped believing in what the ritual meant, that Jesus is my savior. Cassie? I guess, I guess maybe I can see your point. That's, that's all I'm asking right now. I mean, you don't have to fully agree with me. Just consider my perspective, okay? I mean, that's how I would like a lot of discussions Wait. to go that we're gonna have here. I now, think- What are you doing? Are you going to give in that easy? I mean, it's a key point of our belief system. You can't just pick and choose what to believe based on what feels right to you. I mean, what are we doing if you can't agree that certain rules are absolute? Absolute. Absolute, like there are only two genders. And if you don't fit into one category or another, there's nowhere for you to fit in at all. No, that's not what I mean. It's not like there's been research in, uh, about gender and psychology when the Bible was written. Right, so it makes you think that they perfectly translated the Bible after all these years to show how you're supposed to be exactly baptized. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what I'm saying right now. Hey, Din. Why did you invite Charlie and I to youth group? I mean, no offense, Charlie, but we are both basically misfits. Understatement. Exactly. But you're one of the few people who's ever reached out to me in a genuine way. Like, not as a joke, not trying to get in my pants, not for any personal gain that I can see. So why do you think that is, Din? I don't know. I, I like you. And, and Charlie, and I like youth group, so I thought you guys would like it too. But you know that the church doesn't agree with Finley's rebellious nature or with my, with who I am. But I don't care what they think. That's, they're, that's stupid. So why do you care so much about the way Charlie 
or not Charlie, about the way Jake was baptized. I, I don't know. I guess it's because there have to be some rules set in place or else everything just falls apart. But some rules are dumber than others. I mean, much dumber. Like, love thy neighbor. Seems awesome. Like a solid rule to build a whole religion on. But only accepting a full dunk underwater as a baptism? That seems less awesome and more... Stupid? Well, I was trying to be nice for once, but yeah. I mean... If I really think about it, it is pretty stupid. I mean, if one person is dunked, but the other person is sprinkled, but and they both had the same desire in their hearts to follow and love Jesus, then I should only really listen to what's in their hearts, right? Damn, Cassie. I think that's literally the realest you've ever been. <sighs> Maybe you're not so basic after all. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, Jaden, you wish. Hey, uh, Denver? Buddy, are you okay? Yeah, I... I'm sorry I got so mad, I... No, no, hey, there's... You don't have to apologize, okay? I mean... I was the one who opened up this whole can of spiritual... Zombies. <laughs> yes, yes, this whole can of spiritual zombies. Oh, man. My girlfriend is going to love hearing about just how right she was. About what? Never mind, not important. Um, Okay, so uh, time-wise, I'm thinking one more question and then we're gonna make a plan for next week, okay? Um, I've got one. Oh, thank God it's not Cassie. <sighs> well, not to be rude, but what are you doing here? I mean, like Jaden said, the church isn't going to agree with almost anything you've said today. Why start off this new position defying the rules, like wanting to hear from an atheist like Jaden or welcoming a, welcoming me? Okay, that is a solid question. Um, okay, so what Cassie was saying about sprinkling or dunking not being important, but what was in in people's hearts being important, that pretty much sums up my entire religious philosophy. Okay, the majority of, of my beliefs do line up with, with this church, but there are a few key differences, and, and those are the differences that I think are worth fighting for. Now, but I'm, I'm not going to be the guy that you know is just going to start a, a big old brawl of a fight i'm not going to change the church's opinions by punching people in the mouth with mine you know, but this system this um this institution it's not going to change like that it, it's going to change slowly and in small doses and from within and people like me and and like my girlfriend Anna and people people like you if you decide that it's your fight too we are going to go full in on what christianity does right you know labor but but still work to fix what people have Gotten wrong about it and and something that a lot of people have gotten wrong about it for a long time is is saying that people like you can't be a part of it i mean i know i just say but 
who wouldn't want you to be a part of their group? Idiots. A major ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's that's perfect. That's it. Okay. Um, so let's end there. Uh, it's time. And I have nothing better to add than, than that. Um, oh, but I, I do want to add for you guys to please think about the questions and the goals that we worked up and and let's let's continue to to refine these for next week and and yeah um thank you thank you for what i can only describe as an epic first meeting <laughs> thanks guys i'll see you next time hey denver charlie you guys going to be back next week all right. See you guys. All right. Goodbye, not Sean. See you <laughs> next week. Bye, Cassie. Bye, losers. Bye, Cassie. <laughs> oh, hey, Finley. Um, before you go, uh, I just wanted to thank you um, for what you said to Denver. You would be a pretty good youth minister someday, you know that? Fat chance, but... Thank you for saying so. So, uh, Jakey boy, you really think you're going to be back next week? I mean, your youth group's made up of this hopelessly, hopelessly love lost girl who's going to always be in love with the guy you replaced, um, fake rebel, Boy Scout, and yes, man, although. He's starting to become less of one, so good for him. And let's see, Jenna Flew, Charlie, and an atheist. Yes, I am going to be here next week. How about you, Jaden boy? <sighs> I mean, yes, I have to. I'm a straight A student, and you gave us homework. It's not homework. Ah, oh, but uh, Jaden, um, what are you gonna tell your dad about our first meeting? The truth, I think, that, that it was on the books perfection. Look, I'm not asking you to lie or anything. It's, I'm, I'm, no, it's not lying, it's, it's just expanding the narrative, I think. I mean, let's break it down. If, my, if I actually, I actually enjoyed this, kind of, slightly, maybe. But if my dad found out about that, he, he knew something was up. And I think it's better for you and for you to stick around if I just said it sucked. So I'm gonna hope, have myself a donut. I will see you later, my friend. Bye. <laughs> So, how'd it go? It was kind of a disaster, and I should have listened to you. I see. And you are too good of a person to tell me I told you so, uh, but you definitely told me so. So what level of disaster are we talking? Are you going to be allowed back next week? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, you know how disasters can sometimes unearth the good in people? I mean, really show all the good sometimes that, that people have to offer? Sure. Yeah, um, I think the kids saw some potential in me. And I certainly saw an awful lot of potential in them. You know, we, um, 
the kids of this generation get a, a pretty bad rap, but I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about leaving the future in their hands. I am so curious now. What happened in that meeting? <laughs> okay, I tell you what. Um, I will tell you after. Let's say I grab some takeout and then we'll recap. What are you bringing? Chicken fried steak. Uh, you know that gets soggy in transport. Crab Rangoon. Crab Rangoon, extra sauce? Extra sauce, yes. <laughs> oh, mercy. Are you going to actually listen to my advice next time? Yes. Yes, oh my god. Yes, 100%, a thousand times, yes. Anna? Yes, Jake? What do you think the church's official stance should be on the upcoming zombie apocalypse? Hello! Oh, look at you there. I miss you so much. Oh, it feels like forever since I've seen your grubby little faces in real life. Mima misses you so much. <laughs> now, your mama needs a break, so she told me to keep you all occupied. <laughs> we can do that together, can't we? Let's play a game. <laughs> oh, guess we can't exactly play a game together over this video thing. Uh, how about I tell you all a story? Now, whenever I was your age hassling my mama, she would send me to my mima, and I would listen to her stories all day. <laughs> Riley, it is not polite to call a lady old. Of course, I'm not too old to have a mima. And you want to know something else? My Mima had a Mima. No fool. I remember my Mima was crazier than a bee in a flower shop. <laughs> She's always busy uh, making flapjacks with one hand and reading the paper with the other. And, and she was talking a mile a minute at you while she worked. Oh, good gravy, could that woman tell a story? <laughs> Old southern folk tales passed down from Mima to Mima. She said they were so old, no one had ever written them down before. They're secret stories that I've saved just for you. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> Guess I never wrote them down before, neither. <laughs> Sure hope I can remember how it goes. Okay, now, how'd she do it? Uh, she always started with some good old-fashioned flair. Uh, some silly turn of the tongue, like, uh, fluff your biscuits and finish your... No. Finish your biscuits and fluff your feathers. This story will... Curdle your milk and curl your hair and... Well, that's not exactly it, but you get what I'm going for. Now, what was that one? Ah! How the bear learned to hibernate. Look what I found. <laughs> now, this may look like an ordinary bear, but she's not. She is the very first bear. Yes, I am very important because I am the first bear in the history of Earth ever. <laughs> well, she was born in the springtime with the flowers and the clover. and The summertime was good because she loved the sunshine. And then the autumn was all crunchy leaves and pumpkin pie. But when the winter came, well, the winter showed the bear her weaknesses. Blah, 
what is this? I am completely unprepared for this. I had no idea it would be so cold. Nobody told me. I don't know how I can survive this whole winter nonsense. And uh, something happened to help the bear. Uh, someone hurt her. Someone important. Um, like uh, great forest angel spirit. Yeah, yeah, the forest angel was listening in who was very powerful. Uh, you know. Why, darling, bless your heart. Your little bear lips are blue and your little bear ears are frostbit. Yes, I am basically a big bear popsicle. Are you the one who made it so darn chilly here? Why, bless your heart. Cross my heart, I'm not to blame. Winter comes in this place. No matter the wishes of angels or bears. How can I help you? I want to help you, but I know not how. Well... I sure am hungry. Couldn't you at least get some food to fatten my fat behind? <laughs> and the angel was moved to kindness by the bear's plea. So she dug her fingers into the dirt and found some taters. And she blew into the bushes and all the berries flew out. And she squeezed some honey out of the beehives very gently. And all of this the angel gave to the bear, and the bear grew larger and larger with each grateful mouthful. <laughs> what a delicious all-you-can-eat buffet. <laughs> I would be surely lost without your help. <laughs> And the angel felt such contentedness and joy to see that she had made the bear happy and safe and strong. And, and because of that, she started to sing a song. She hummed a lullaby so sweet and so soothing, a melody straight from the forest itself. It was so powerful that the bear immediately began to grow drowsy and snuggle into its own fat behind. <laughs> now, some people claim this particular tune has been lost time immemorial, but I happen to know a secret translation that I learned from my Mima. Goes like this. Rumbly tumbly, scratch your nose, rumbly tumbly, stretch your toes, fickle to and fickle fro, time to rest and time to grow, tickle nose and tickle toes, and wake to sunshine, melting snow. See, it's a magic song. <laughs> And when the bear fell asleep, the sweet angel song, it was the deepest and most profound sleep she ever experienced. The angel of the forest tucked her in, kissed her goodnight, and that bear slept until springtime came. And each year, from then on, the first bear would sing that song to put herself to sleep in a deep, warm sleep so she'd survive the winter. And when that bear had children, she taught that song to her cubs, who in turn taught it to their cubs. Each and every year's, the bears sing their winter lullaby, and its magic protects them through all the hardest months until the snow melts and the springtime brings back the flowers and the clover. The end. <laughs> Is that all right? I'm, I, I think I remembered most of it. Uh, 
I could sing you that song sometime. Put you to sleep just like the honey bears in their snowy caves. Would you like that? Riley, you take your finger out of your sister's ear. Riley, there is nothing in there for you, buddy. Now, come on, cut it out now. <clears throat> well, maybe that's just a warm-up story. Let's try a different one. Uh, I'm sure I remember another if I try real hard. Yes, of course I remember. It's only been... 50 years or so. Let's get started. It's like uh, turning over an old engine. This, this here yarn will uh, tumble your weeds and shine your saddle. Yes, sirree, Bob. Yeah! <laughs> Went a little cowboy with that one. <laughs> yeah, it's fine, huh? Uh, this story. This story is a doozy. It's called How... The mouse got her long tail. Now, let's see. So, we've got our friend, the bear. Excuse me, the first bear. I, yes, beg pardon. The first bear. <laughs> She's very important. <clears throat> yeah, she is queen of her domain. An excellent hunter. All the animals were afraid of her. The possums and the gophers and the, and the deer and the bison and even the rattlesnakes keep their rattles silent when she comes around. Sounds a little lonely. Come on, where is everybody? Not even a visitor for tea. How rude. <laughs> so, one day, when the bear had finished all her bear chores and eaten a full meal plus second helpings, a tiny mouse ran right by her feet. Uh, <laughs> Being as she was such a good hunter, the bear grabbed the mouse and with <laughs> instantly put out her paw and slapped set it right down on the mouse's tail. Now, this was a very smart mouse. And Mama had taught her to be polite to strangers, even when there was a chance they were going to eat her for supper. So, she sat up straight and turned to the bear, only a very little bit terrified. Good afternoon, she said. The bear was surprised. Good afternoon, said the bear. The mouse dusted herself off and said, I'm happy to meet you, for you are a very large and magnificent bear, and I am sure you would be very good company, but I'm afraid I have to leave now, and I must be on my way. <laughs> And the mouse tried to hurry off in the direction she was going, but the bear had her paw placed firmly on the mouse's tail. And the mouse, even though she tugged and yanked, she could not get away. Oh, please let me go, the mouse said. And, oh, she was so loud that Forest Angel heard and pricked up her ears and started listening. Uh, <clears throat> Why, you're such a well-behaved little mouse with such good manners. So the angel winked, and when the bear leaned forward and opened her jaws, a jolt of angel magic made the tail grow just enough to place her outside of the bear's reach. <laughs> oh, strange. I was just about to eat you. Well, I do not have time to get eaten today. I am a very important mouse with very important things to do. The bear was intrigued. What kind of important things? The mouse exclaimed, 
well, I have to get my children cleaned and my garden pruned and my groceries cooked. Yeah, and I simply do not have time for lollygagging. The bear considered this. That doesn't seem very important. The angel shook her head, thinking the little mouse sounded quite important indeed. You should show more hospitality to your guests, she warned the bear. But the bear opened her mouth, and when the bear's pink tongue was almost touching the mouse. The tail grew longer again. The mangel laughed at her trick, and then the bear snapped her mouth shut on empty air. <laughs> the bear felt chastised by her rudeness. Hmm. I suppose you must be very important after all. And she let her paw off the mouse's tail and let her go. The mouse, looking at the tip of her tail, which is now greatly elongated, admired it. Of course I am important, and don't you forget it. And the mouse went home. <clears throat> so, the moral of the story is, oh, uh, well, um, if anybody's got you by the uh, short uh, britches, you think they might eat you alive? Don't fret. Just remember the mouse and be polite. And tell that bully you're much too important for any of their horseplay. A good talking to can usually solve a problem before it gets out of hand. Riley, don't say that. Uh, don't cry, girls. I I'm, I'm sure the mouse lived a very long life with all of her babies and was certainly not eaten by the bear. Well, bears are not scary. Well, uh, okay, bears can be a little bit scary with their claws and their teeth, but, but you don't have to be scared. You could be brave like, like the mouse. <laughs> Hush now. That's it. Shh, shh, shh. Now, how about another story about being brave? Huh? Let me Ma, try one more time. Now, I think I got a good one. Gotta start it out right. Uh, I reckon this tale will steam your shorts and make your pepper sneeze, I tell you what. <laughs> Oh, you guys like that part, okay? This here story is sharper than a cactus wearing spurs and juicier than a gossiping grapefruit and purtier than a sunset and a bow tie. <laughs> this one is called How the Fish Got Her Gills. Now, you remember our friend the bear. You know how she likes to hunt. She is always hungry, kind of like you, Riley. Only there isn't any food she won't eat. Not even broccoli. Oh, yeah. And she slurps the turtles right out of their shells. And she eats the birds with all their feathers on. <laughs> but there was one animal she liked better than any other. That was the slippery fish that lived in the cold river waters. So, uh, this was uh, before fish could breathe underwater. <laughs> what, you thought fish could always do that? No, uh, heavens no, that would be silly. Fish came up for air just like you and me, and so were always popping their heads up in the water, and the bear was eating them. One day, this fish, she was swimming home, minding her own business, and she came up for a tiny breath of water, 
And the bear reached in and grabbed her right out of the current. And the bear's long claws scraped her sides and the fish thought she was done for. If only I could hide from this bear, the fish said. And the forest angel was having a good day. And so she heard the bear and... Bless your scales from fin to tail, the forest angel decreed, impressed by this fish and her moxie. And the fish struggled back and forth and slipped out of the bear's grasp back into the river. She was a very tough fish, and she refused to die. So the forest angel waved her magical hands, and suddenly the water began to fill the fish up like air. And she, the scratch from the bear became long gills that the fish could use to suck in oxygen from the water. <laughs> Uncle Brew, said the fish, but it was a little muffled because her mouth was full of water. And she never had to leave the safety of the river again because she could breathe underwater. And, and she told all the other fish about it, and they could breathe underwater because she was such a good teacher. Riley, what do you mean that isn't true? Of course it's true. Why, my own Mima told me that story or something very close to it. All my stories are true. Kinda. Well, well, they're mostly true. See, they happened so long ago. Before people had books or internet and before they could remember real well. So, they had to tell each other stories and they had to listen real close to each other. In these stories, they might change a little over the years. In fact, they might sound a little bit different when you tell them to your grandbabies. <laughs> but a good story is always partly true. Now, would I lie to you? <laughs> yes, Riley. You may ask a question. <sighs> Why, I would love to sing the hibernation song to you again. <sighs> Rumbly, tumbly, stretch your toes. Rumbly, tumbly, pick your nose. That is to the way it goes. That's the way it goes this time. Now, let's see. Pickle to and pickle throw. Time to eat and time to glow. Tickle nose, tickle toes. And tell me all the tales you know. You're still not buying buying anything in my store. I can't even do the accent with it. You're still not buying anything in my store without without wearing without wearing without wearing. You're still not buying anything in my store. Buying anything. Still not buying anything in my store without wearing any damn shoes. <laughs>